The abortion debate has sparked new questions about in vitro fertilization. A majority of Americans support the practice that helps childless couples conceive. Others are divided on the morality of a procedure which involves the destruction of frozen embryos. Charlie and Aaron reports on a possible solution where everyone wins. Millions of couples deal with infertility and more are turning to science in the hope of growing their families. The latest U.S. statistics show that in 2021, in vitro fertilization resulted in the births of more than 86,000 or 2 percent of babies nationwide. Amidst growing debate over IVF, a lesser known option called embryo adoption is also gaining ground. For 10 years, Rodney and Mary Leah Miller struggled to have a family. Attempt after attempt, uh, negative pregnancy test after negative pregnancy test, you begin to wonder, you know, will this ever happen for us? That question led the Alabama couple to undergo several rounds of in vitro fertilization, which all failed. Then in May of 2020, friends told them about embryo adoption, a process which involves a woman receiving one or several donated frozen embryos. We both just had a a piece about us, and, and we're very confident that this is how the Lord was going to start our family. The Millers connected with the Snowflake program, which helps people with embryos in frozen storage to offer them for adoption. While their first try resulted in miscarriage, the second proved doubly successful. Two years ago, twins Dalton and Mary Elizabeth, who had been frozen for 10 years, were born via C section. To see that promise realized on December 23rd, 2022 was, um, I mean, it was truly a miracle, but also just, you know, representative of God's faithfulness. Concerns about this technology have moved to the forefront this year, especially over the large number of embryos which may never be implanted. In February, the Alabama Supreme Court ignited the debate by ruling frozen embryos created during IVF to be children. Then, during its annual meeting in June, the Southern Baptist Convention passed a resolution expressing compassion for couples faced with infertility, as well as moral caution for the procedure. Ethicist Jason Thacker advised the SBC on the matter. We're not condemning the practice outright, but we're saying we must kind of think cautiously and, and cultivate wisdom for how we navigate these devastating realities. Nightlight Christian Adoption Agency, home to the Snowflake program, estimates more than 1.5 million embryos remain in frozen storage nationwide. CBN News asked Beth Button, the program's executive director, about the possibility of finding adoptive families for all those embryos. It really depends on how many of those embryos end up being um, donated for adoption. So many of the embryos that are in frozen storage, um, the family who created them could potentially be still planning to use them at a later point for reproduction. Button says many who support embryo adoption are unaware of what's involved in the practice. And unfortunately, it's just part of the everyday practice of in vitro fertilization that embryos are discarded. Ethical issues that can be difficult, especially for many Christians. We face them and made uh, very difficult decisions with our very, very first uh, specialist that we spoke with on, on the number of embryos that we were willing to fertilize and, and that we wouldn't be discarding. Thacker sees the widespread acceptance of in vitro fertilization as the next stance in the fight for the unborn. A recent Gallup poll found that 82% believe IVF to be morally acceptable. 10% viewed the procedure as morally wrong, with the remainder expressing no opinion. And when it comes to destroying frozen embryos created by in vitro fertilization, 49% believe it is moral to do so, while 43% disagree. What we're seeing not only in the state of Alabama, but other states rushing to uh, kind of usher in protections for IVF, access to IVF. We see the push at the federal level to federalize access to IVF. Meanwhile, the Millers are grateful for their growing family as they're expecting a second set of twins later this year. Look at these beautiful blessings the Lord has given us. Uh, we spend our time thanking him for, for the science and everything that he has provided to make this possible. Charlene Aaron, CBN News.
Well, the second set of twins, uh, that's going to be a, a, a wonderfully growing family. I, I think I've, uh, this procedure is, is wonderful because it allows couples to have children. And, and instead of saying, no, you, you, you can't uh, and we're sorry for your infertility, it gives them an option and, and, and gives them life, which is wonderful and gives them a hope, a future, a, a, a family. At the same time, the economics of the practice are really disconcerting because you have to create so many embryos, it's so expensive to do it, so they're going to say, let's create an abundance that if we have a failure, we'll, we'll have backups, and in that backup, it won't be as expensive. So that's what's driving this. It's the economics of the procedure that is uh, creating the problem. But what a wonderful solution for couples to say, well, I'll adopt a frozen embryo. That's, that's wonderful, and, and I applaud that. Uh, it, it, it's amazing that medical science has gotten us to these ethical dilemmas. The good part, childless couples get to have children. But the bad part, what do you do with frozen embryos? Adoption seems a wonderful solution.